What is up, Midweek Online? Welcome back to another week of awesome game time. This week, instead of me losing to Nathan again, I decided to invite some of you to join us. So today we're playing a game called Danger Word, and we have Lacey and Hannah on one team, and then we have Andy and Alex on another team, and this is gonna be awesome for everyone watching, maybe not so awesome for Hannah or Alex. So to start, let's look at our first winning word. The winning word is shorts. The danger word is pants. Clothing. Shirt. Wrong. Summer. Shorts. That is correct. Andy, you can go <laughs> slime Alex. <laughs> Bring it on. Like so how much chili string? Like, like, all of it. All a of lot. It. Or I just got to do it. Okay. <laughs> gotta commit. Shake it. <laughs> I don't even remember the last time I used to shake it. <laughs> Try not <Sorry>. to get <laughs> me. Get a no, you can get her too. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that tastes horrible. <laughs> there you go. There it is. Just blend. Let's take a look at what the next winning word is. The winning word is baguette. The danger word is bread. Food. Apple. No. French. Baguette. That is yeah. correct. <laughs> Lacey, you get to go attack Santa. <laughs> nope, with the first one. Okay. Yep. Oh. Oh, okay. Wind's going that way, so you'd be like, blow it over here. Or blow it at yourself. <laughs> that yeah, do what you yes. need to do. <laughs> Wow, you're so bad at this. <laughs> there we go. It is tied one to one. Let's take a look at our next winning word. The winning word is popsicle. The danger word is lollipop. Food. Apple. <laughs> Rock. <Wrong. laughs> Frozen. Ice cream is two Wrong. words. Right. <laughs> Stick. Popsicle. That yeah. is correct. That is the winning word, Lacey. You get to attack Hannah again, this time with the water. You got that? <laughs> Baptize <Good luck>. me, Lacey. <laughs> <laughs> that was way too nice. <laughs> the score is two to one. Uh, the Putmans are winning, and so let's take a look at the next winning word. The winning word is guacamole. The danger word is salsa. Avocado. Guacamole. That is correct. <laughs> that is the winning word. <laughs> yeah. Andy, go ahead and go. No. Alex, I Alex, take off it. your. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, this is the water See, this, one again. This, is wa this, this washes is a off the silly comes screen. down to the final round. It's silly silly Yes. yes. <laughs> that was so good. That's what I was aiming for. Better than dummy dummy. <laughs> We're down to the final round. It is tied two to two. The winner of this one takes the prize of not losing. So let's take a look at the next yes. winning word. The winning word is porcupine. The danger word is hedgehog. Animal. <laughs> Monkey. Incorrect. Quill. Porcupine. Porcupine is the winning oh, no. word. <laughs> Hannah and Lisa, you guys win. Alex and Andy, you guys lose. Andy, you still win because you get to go uh, have Alex actually lose here. Yes. So go ahead and give her a large <laughs> dose of color. <laughs> you can do it a few times. Oh yeah, again. Okay. Get closer. Maybe a little closer. Get closer. More. Kind of going up. Try like, yeah. we'll try. Yes. Maybe not. Or yes. just take, take off the lid. <laughs> take off the lid. I'm yes. fine with that sure. too. Never I'm gets sorry, the job done. Alex, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Great job, everybody. Thanks again for playing. Now let's take a look at a great testimony from one of our leaders. Hello, friends. I just wanted to uh, give you guys my testimony. I 
really wanted to do this like in person because I think it's better to hear testimonies in person because then you can ask the person about the thing and yeah, but um, this is the best we can do because of COVID, you know? So um, yeah, I'm just gonna go right into it and just ask God for uh, words. Dear Jesus, I just pray for uh, words that uh, these kids need to hear. They, um, I know that um, I love you and I want them to love you even more. So I pray that they would fall even more in love with you because of this. And I pray that uh, there can be some relating and that kind of thing. But uh, most of all, I just want you and your power, Jesus. So uh, just give me words. Um, so I'm gonna start. I'm gonna kind of take two angles to it. Um, I'm gonna kind of say what it was like for everyone else, like from looking from the outside of my life. And then I'm gonna say like what it was like for me personally. So um, uh, from the outside, I was raised in a Christian home. Uh, I knew the Bible very early on in my life and it was just like all around me. And my parents uh, loved God, but it didn't really seem to make any difference to like the rest of the week. It was like church on Sunday, that's kind of it. And um, growing up I had like hard time in school. I kind of drifted between uh, friend groups and didn't really have a sense of belonging and I feel like I've always sort of had that with me. But um, yeah, so that was part of my life as well. Um, uh, I didn't just have a hard time in school like socially. It was also like academically. I wouldn't consider myself very academically gifted. But, um, yeah, it was hard to relate to any sort of group of people because I was always too much or too little for someone else. So I, I didn't really fit anywhere. Um, and, uh, yeah, I accepted Jesus probably like for myself when I was like seven ish. It's actually really funny because my parents were kind of upset about it, but, um, I was at a baseball field and I was at one of my brother's games. We, uh, very frequent, uh, that I would just be traveling from game to game from my brother. And uh, we were in Steamboat, Colorado, and this kid came up to me and then just straight up asked me, hey, have you ever uh, heard the gospel before, or, like accepted Jesus? And then I'm like, oh yeah, kind of, my parents knew. And I told him the whole, uh, the whole story and I was just like, I was seven, so I was like, uh, yeah, I think so, but, yeah, I don't know. And then he's just like, well, if you don't know for sure, then you probably haven't done it. Do you want to just like make sure that you have that? Because this is the most important thing. And I was like, oh, okay, sure. So um, I prayed and um, that was it. And then I told my parents about it afterwards and they were like, what? We weren't there for it. And it was kind of funny, but yeah. So there was that and where am I going with this? Uh, the first like major challenge of my life, besides just the background challenges of school, I got pens in my car. Um, the Just the background challenges of school was probably um, my parents' divorce. That happened when I was like in fifth, sixth grade. They separated when I was in fifth grade and then they divorced for real um, in sixth grade. And that was hard for me because even though they told me that it wasn't my fault, I always uh, sort of had this idea that, okay, that's not exactly right. Uh, because I could have um, done something different or said something different that would have maybe not led to this outcome. But um, I know now that there's, there's no way. It was just like, that was my parents' issue and that was something that they needed to work out. And I was separate from that, but because of the pain of it, because it was so hurtful to me, um, I just like kind of tried to uh, break it down and make it make sense of it in my mind. Um, so that was really hard and around the same time I started going to youth group, it was middle school and, um, there was just this sense of uh, belonging and community that I hadn't really had before in youth group and that was really new and, and nice. So I really liked that. And then that was around the same time I started getting really excited about the gospel and it started making sense to me and it was just like, wow, Jesus did this thing and it affects my life today. So. Um, yeah, that was just really awesome to have a community like that, a sense of belonging, a sense of purpose, and also, um, just have that space where I felt kind of understood in a way. And that was all those, also the same time where, you know, middle school bodies change in, you start becoming attracted to people and things. And so I 
was like still struggling with that, but also trying to um, like make sense of my body, but also holiness and, and all this weird stuff. But um, because I was so excited about the gospel, I wanted to learn about it. I went to so many mission trips, uh, conferences, uh, youth camps, stuff like that. And um, I kind of stuck around through all that. And then I still was, was having some like struggles uh, inside, but I'll, I'll get to that in a second. So um, I was like serving in youth group, going to mission trips, but like struggling inside. And um, I started leading worship um, and that kind of thing. And then there was this one mission trip. It was, um, I'll say that this was like the turning point for everything really. Um, I, it was a mission trip to Mexico that I had with Matt and I went just because it was like another thing to go to. And I, I mean, I loved missions and stuff, but uh, it was still like something I don't know, I'm over explaining this, but <laughs> I went to this mission trip and it was it was really cool and it was really fun to get to serve God and uh, people that I hadn't met from a different culture and a background that I hadn't seen before. Um, and it was really fun, but also there was this one night, I can't remember what night of the week it was, but we were talking about uh, masks. Uh, uh, it's easy to pretend and put on a face like a mask, you know, like face mask, COVID, relevant. Um, but. Yeah, it's easy to pretend around people, especially church. Um, Cause I mean, I grew up in church and I knew that there were some things that Christians had a hard time talking about. And um, so I was like sitting there and uh, the speaker, I can't, can't remember his name, unfortunately, but he was talking about uh, his battle and struggle with pornography and uh, his sexuality. And I just like, I was thinking about that and I was like, man, I also struggle with that and I don't want to because I had made up in my mind that like, okay, I struggled in this way, but I knew it was hard to talk about it. I knew no one wanted to talk about it really. So I was just like, okay, I got to keep this locked up inside of myself and that's not a healthy thing to do. So, um, that was that. And then that night it just really hit me like, even though I've heard that message about masks before, it was kind of easy to, for me to brush off, but not that night. God was really coming after me. And um, he just like highlighted it in front of me. It's just like, you need to tell Matt. And um, I said, well, like, I guess this is what I have to do. This is the right thing and I want to get better. So um, I did that and I told Matt that I struggle with pornography, but also I struggle with my sexuality. I am attracted to men and that's something that was a huge source of shame for me for a long time. And it is still even today hard to admit this because of a uh, Christian context. And um, a lot of Christians don't know how to deal with that, don't know how to process or uh, relate in that way. But yeah, that was my story for so long. And it still is, I'd say I'm, I'm still attracted to men, but the difference is that I don't have to like give in to those attractions um, because God, has enabled me to um, change the way that I think about it. I still have those attractions because men are still beautiful, just as like God created us to be, like clear in Genesis. Uh, both men and women were created to be beautiful in God's image, and it's the world that has twisted that beauty and made it selfish and uh, for our own pleasure. Um, so. Yeah, so um, not everything changed, not everything got better when I told Matt about it, but I definitely say that it was a great thing to do. And um, I think beyond that, like I had to step down from, sorry, I'm getting distracted. I had to step down from uh, leading worship because I was thinking about a freedom that I knew nothing about really. And it was very clear from my readings of scripture that um, homosexuality was a sin and it was against God, but God wasn't against me. So um, I knew that he had something better for me just because I knew I knew the gospel and I knew my desires were very like both very strong and I didn't know how to reconcile those two things. But um, yeah, I still I still did and I was looking for help and I found um, a, a group at a different church and there's like all sorts of backstory that I don't know. But um, there was this one group 
that was advertised as like a sexual addiction recovery group. And I, um, I got into it and I started talking with the leader and, and first, like for the first couple of weeks, it was great. It was awesome. I was learning so much about myself, about others and about, uh, God, but then it got like harder and harder. And, uh, earlier on, they said they were all about grace, but it was very clear from, um, personal counseling and talking to uh, people that are smarter than me, um, that this was not a healthy group. Um, I was the youngest person in there by 20 years, and that's not a bad thing, but um, it was definitely harder to relate. There wasn't anyone else in the group that struggled with um, same-sex attraction. It was just me, and I was kind of alone in that. But um, the other people in the group had issues with um, like their relationships with their wives and also pornography to a certain extent. but. Um, I felt like there wasn't anyone that could really understand or relate to me as like a 20, I was like 19 when I first started, I think. So it was like, as a 19 year old, I'm the youngest person in there by my age. So there wasn't much that I could relate to about like their story other than a few specific points. And it was just like more shame being like heaped upon me. And I, uh, I got out of that group. It ended badly. Um, like no one got physically hurt or anything, but, uh, there was one night where, uh, they tried to call out, one of my peers tried to call out the leader for some of the things that he had said that weren't, uh, biblical and he lost his mind and uh, the group ended in a very like unhealthy way and they tried to pick it back up. They tried to make it better, but it was still like the damage was done. And so I got out of that group really, uh, jaded and frustrated with the church and I was just kind of done with everything. And then um, I was invited to go on a mission trip to Oregon um, a while back. And I, I knew nothing about Oregon. I knew nothing about the organization that I was going to be working with. It's called YWAM. Um, it's, yeah, that's, that's later in my story. But um, I knew nothing about them, but I said yes to the trip. And I went on the trip, and it was different than any other mission trip that I'd gone on because... Um, instead of like service projects, like building things um, and like helping the church population, like painting buildings or any sort of like hands-on building project. It was just us sharing our faith with total strangers on the streets of Oregon. And I had never done that before. And I was struggling with what to say um, because I just kind of said yes to this trip as a last ditch effort kind of thing. And it really got me thinking about my story and like what I would say to people, like, actually, what do I believe? And, um, because of that, it was also like confronting to all these things. And I was, they talked a lot about hearing God. And I was like, I mean, I don't know how to hear God because I tried to, why doesn't God speak to me? You know, I was very frustrated with that whole idea. And then, um, my one of the leaders that was on the trip uh, told me that you know during those times where uh, people ask for ask God for a response or like hey what is God saying about this it's just um, it doesn't God doesn't have to speak to you and that doesn't mean that that says anything about your faith just worship God for who He is and I was like all right I can I can do that and there was one night where we were talking about. Um, unreached people groups. And this is the night that kind of like got me into missions and got me excited for, um, what faith in Jesus could be and what it means to the world. Uh, we were talking about unreached people groups, people in the world that, uh, had never heard the name of Jesus before. Um, and there was a world map that we were standing on and there were, there was a speaker talking about unreached people groups and he was talking about how like there's a 1040 window and if I, I was standing next to a map I could totally show you but there's this um, area from northern Africa till southeast Asia in about just like the top portion it's called the 1040 window you could probably look it up but um, people in that window there's more unreached people groups than there are outside of that so there's more people that have never heard the name of Jesus don't have access to a church or a Bible in their language or anything like that. And then he gave a brief history of missions and that kind of thing. And I was kind of getting excited. And then at the end, he did the thing where he asked, Hey, ask God what country he wants you to go to. And I was like, I don't know. I, I, I want to do this, but I, I don't hear from God, you know? 
And so I was just sitting there and I remembered what my leader said just as I was starting to get like really frustrated and angry. Um, and then I just let go and I, I worshiped God for who he was. And I was like, um, you're worthy of the nations. You're worthy of these people. Even if I can't hear you right now, I choose to believe that you care about the world and you care about me. So, um, right after that, it was, it was God that actually uh, spoke to me, not like out loud or anything, but it was just like a thought that I could tell wasn't my own entirely. And he told me that he wants me to share my story with people like me that haven't, that um, struggle with their sexuality in whatever way, in whatever community. And um, so that's what I want to share with you guys. And I want to tell you that um, the thing that made the most difference in my journey with my sexuality and with my faith is that um, just don't worry about like having to change yourself to follow Jesus. It's as you continue to follow Jesus, as you continue to surrender to him, he's the one that changes you. And like, there's all sorts of book recommendations I could uh, throw out there. Um, one of my favorite people ever is, her name's Jackie Hill Perry. She is a black American uh, spoken word artist and preacher. And she has a lot to say about um, gender and sex and the sexuality topic in general. She has a book called Gay Girl, Good God. And that's awesome read, highly recommend that. There's another one called, um, not of her book, but there's another book called um, Messy Grace, The Secret, hold on. Yeah, it's just called Messy Grace and it's by a, a guy who didn't grow up in the church. He, um, both of his parents, um, they were married, they got divorced and they both got into same-sex relationships and like his, his, both his mom and his dad. And um, it's just his story about how he eventually becomes a pastor and um, he, how he tells um, his story to both his parents. And that's really good, really heavy, really good stuff though. And yeah, so that's my story. This is kind of all over the place. I mean, yeah, it's COVID, but if you have any questions, you can reach out to me, you can reach out to Matt um, and we would love to talk about it. I just want you to know that if you don't take anything away from it, and anything away from this story right here, just remember that God loves you and you don't have to change yourself to belong to God, but he will change you and he won't leave you how he found you. So that is the source of hope that has led to the difference in my life. And I hope that this offers some hope to you. So, um, God, I just pray for um, every individual that is listening whenever this is. Um, and I pray for anyone that is struggling in any way, shape or form. I pray that they would not wear a mask because that is unhealthy. Um, I pray that they would uh, submit to you because uh, you are the difference maker and you made us, you know us better than we know ourselves. So God, I just pray that um, people would find health and they would find healing in you. So Jesus name, amen. I love you, stay blessed, stay highly favored. And yeah, have a good day. Thanks again, Sam, so much for that. Join us next week as we have a discussion panel on identity. It's going to be a great conversation, so make sure you join us then. And we'll see you in our Zoom chat in just a couple minutes.